Okay, how can we estimate an imperfect square root? Um, you should be okay with the fact that the square root sign is just a question of what number times itself would get you the number underneath the, the square root sign or the radical sign. In this case, it would be 6 because 6 times 6 would get you 36. What happens, though, if it's not a nice, easy number and you're needing to estimate it what it would be? For example, what if we looked at the square root of 5? Well, sometimes it helps if on a sheet of paper you just number 1 to 12. And I'm not going to number the whole thing. I'm just going to do about the first 5. And then you ask yourself, okay, what's 1 times 1? 1 times 1 is 1. So the square root of 1 is, well, gee, it's 1 times 1 equals 1. So the square root of 1 is 1. So there's your answer for the square root right above it. What's 2 times 2? It's 4. So what's the square root of 4? It's 2. 3 times 3 is 9, and I mean the pattern just continues. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. So now what we can do is we can take the imperfect square root and we try to place it in between it. Let's see. No, it's not going to fit between 1 and 4. It's going to fit between 4 and 9. So the square root of 5 is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. And so then you can take it a little bit further if you need to. But a lot of times this will get you close enough to it. It's the square root of 5 is going to be somewhere between 5. Excuse me. The square root of 5 would be somewhere between 2 and 3. Was the square root of 5 closer to the square root of 4 or to the square root of 9? Well, 5 is really close to 4, so it's going to be a low 2. It's, it's, it's going to be like 2.1 or 2.2 probably. It's, it's going to be a low 2. If, if we were looking at a square root of 8, I'd say, hey, it's probably 2.8 or 2.9 because it was almost the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 was 3, so it's just a little bit less than, than 3.